All right, so in this um, demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a letter mark logo using the letter T, the letter S, and one basic shape, the rectangle. Uh, this is a um, positive and negative space type design. What I'm also going to be using here is I'm going to be using the direct selection tool and the group selection tool. Also going to be showing you a little bit of something to do with layers and artboard, a pathfinder, sorry, and also transparency. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by selecting, oh, by the way, this is my final result. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to start off by taking this thing and I'm going to reduce it down, making it smaller. Whoop, looks like I didn't get everything. Let me get all of the get the whole thing selected here. Let's try it again. There we go. Now reduce this down like that. And let's move it over here. Let's move this out of the way. And let's take our T, S, and our rectangle and let's bring it more down in towards the middle. This is what we're going to work on. Okay, so uh, layers. Let's go to the layers. If you see, I have everything's on this layer right here except um, the T and the S, and this guy I want on that upper layer. So I have a template layer and a work layer. I want everything that I'm going to be working on, these three elements right here, I want it on my work layer, and this I want on my template layer, which I'm going to lock. So this way, I can't interact with that. Really, now I can just interact with these three objects. That's what I want to do. So that's how we basically set up our layers. And again, the only reason that this T and S symbol that I create is here is because I want you to kind of get a sense of what I'm doing. That's that's really why it's there. When I designed this thing originally, obviously it wasn't there. I just went ahead and did it. And because I'm going to do this again, this will look slightly different from this, but that doesn't that's not the important thing. The important thing here is the steps, how you go about doing this. So I don't think I'm actually going to be using this anymore, at least not for the time being. So I'm going to put it away. And I have the Pathfinder panel, which I will be using shortly, and the Transparency panel. Well, actually, I didn't use the Transparency panel. It turns out that I've just, I'm just going to leave it sitting there. Okay, so now back to this. So I have the letter T and the letter S. I chose the font Arial. <clears throat> it was a font that I thought worked pretty good. Uh, Arial Bold, and right now this is set to 72 point. I'm going to probably make this a little bit bigger, make it a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. I like that size. That's probably good right there. Okay, so now I have these two letters, and they are both live text. If you click on it, you can see that this is live text. The path is underneath the letter. It is not around the letter. Uh, I cannot really edit this while it's live text. So what I want to do is I want to convert both of these letters from live text to be basic shapes or graphic shapes just like this. So then I can start working with them. So to do that I'm going to select both of these letters. I'm going to go up to the type menu and I'm going to go create outlines. Now watch what happens when I do that. All of the uh, edges of this letter and this letter now become paths. So you can see that what we have are two, basically two compound paths here. That's what this is. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I have two letters that i got to work with. Let's start off by let, working with the letter T first. So I'm going to click on the letter S, Object, Hide, Selection, and I'm going to take my rectangle tool because I need to put the rectangle tool and the T together in order to make this begin to work. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take my rectangle. I'm going to bring in my rectangle in. I'm going to try to overlap the rectangle uh, on top of the T somewhat. And if I want to see, this is where it gets a little dicey. Let's see if I can zoom in even further on this. Yeah. Go to the View menu and go Outline. There you can see the outline of the T and the outline of the rectangle. I'm going to try to get that thing to line up and it actually it, it's going to fight me. It just isn't going to go any closer than that. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck with it doing this. So I'll live with that. So before I go ahead and uh, I'll, let's go back to the view menu and go preview again. So I'm going to copy the um, rectangle because I'm going to need it again. So I'm going to go edit copy and edit paste 
and there I pasted it and I move it out of the way. Select both of these letters and I'm going to go to Pathfinder. I'm going to go, actually, let's go to the View menu first. Let's go to Zoom Out. I'm getting ahead of myself. View, Zoom Out. Uh, right here. There we go. No, too much. Let's go back in. Okay. Now I'm going to get my uh, rectangle tool right here. And I'm going to just uh, free transform this, drag it down until it reaches the bottom of that letter T, right there. Good. Okay, and I actually got a little bit of a overhang there. If you really come in close, you can see what I'm talking about. No, actually I don't. Look at that. Well, there is a slight one. So to make sure that it doesn't overhang, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the direct selection tool and you see I've got this little corner radius thing here. If I click and drag that now with the with the object selected, all four corners are going to go. But if I use the direct selection tool, click on just that one corner right there, I can take that and I can round that rectangle in a little bit. Now let's go up and take a look at this view, fit, artboard, and window. And you see how the other three corners here, the other three corners have not change let me hide the T I mean, actually let me move the T you see how I got that rounded corner right there I wanted just one rounded corner so I didn't have any of that corner peeking out of the T I'm gonna go control Z to move that T back okay so now I got my two objects the way I want them pretty much I'm going to select both of them now I'm gonna to go to the Pathfinder and I'm going to unite them so now I have one piece that guy right there. Now I'm going to go object show all and I'm going to bring my S back. I'm going to do some things to the S before I actually turn the S into my final shape. So let's bring the S over here. This guy right here is going to be used again. So I'm going to scale it down. I want to make it a little bit thinner and I want to make it a little bit smaller this way. So I just use the free transform tool, transform it down. What I want to do is I don't like the way these angles appear uh, in my design. I want them to be sort of flat. So I'm going to take this shape right here and I'm going to slowly move it in place until it does this like that. See? And I'm going to go edit copy first. Make sure I copy that piece. Now I'm going to select both of these guys and using again the pathfinder this time I'm going to use the minus front watch what happens to the S boom okay so you see I've changed the way that that S looks and now I'll go edit paste and I'll take this guy and I'll do the same thing bring it down to where I got it right about there select both of these guys and go boom okay so now I have my S doing what I wanted to do see this is all very simple stuff so now I'm going to click on my S, and actually, to make this easier even, let me click on this and change its color. Let's make this a bright red so that you can see what's going on. There we go. Now I'm going to take my S, and I'm going to bring my S into about where I want it in here. I want it to be about there, okay? I don't want it to go too far over the T, so I'm going to position it until visually, let's go to the uh, Control G for uh, or control R sorry for rulers and I'm going to drag out a guide to right about there and I'm going to kind of fool around with the position of that now what do I want to do with this do I actually want that to be like that I probably do let's bring it back one though that I think is probably pretty good and I want you to notice that this S sits a little bit bring it up just a bit it probably should be just a touch bigger so let's make this thing just a touch bigger if I can. Yeah, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, it's giving me a hard time. Let's get it now. Let's see if I can make it just a touch. Okay, you know what? Easier. Let's go in here and make it 102%, 101%. 100, 101%. Hit OK. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I want it to be just slightly bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in over here. And I want to come in and I want to get this, this S to just kiss the edge, 
right about like that. See how there's just that tiniest little bit of overhang there? That's what I'm looking for. Now let's go view fit artboard and window and take a look at what the whole thing looks like. View, guides, hide guides. Okay, so I'm in pretty good shape here. This is pretty much what I'm looking for. If you look up here, it looks very similar. That's what I'm looking for. So now what I want to do is I want to select both of these elements, the S and the T together. Again, going back to the Pathfinder, I'm going to click on this one right here, Divide. What Divide is going to do is it's basically going to divide the shapes up, break them into separate parts, and then I will play with those parts. So I click Divide with both of these selected, click Divide, I go Object, Ungroup, and now I'm going to zoom in, let's zoom in by marquee to right about there, and now I can sort of begin to take this apart and see what I end up with. So I'm going to start off by clicking with this. That's the center part of the S. I'm going to hit delete. I get that. And I look at this and I go, I don't think I want the top, so I'm going to click on the top and I'm going to hit delete. Yeah. And I don't want the bottom, so I'm going to click on the bottom and I'm going to hit delete. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, over here, I don't think I want this guy right here. Delete. There. So now I've basically got this and it looks pretty good. Now, again, if you take a look at the original, go to wind or go to view fit all in window. There. That's what I have up there. So that means that essentially what I did was I looked at this and I realized that this might be more interesting if I took that one corner piece and I hit delete. So there it is. I've actually recreated this thing. And if you select the whole thing and make it bigger, you can pretty much see what we did. There it is. Done and looks pretty good and that didn't take too long um i hope you enjoyed this and we'll try it yourself thank you for watching